Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel on human design. Today we're going to be looking at Jordan Peterson. I'm going to do a, an overview, uh, overview analysis of his chart, um, which I hope you're going to enjoy. I really enjoy it, uh, doing readings and looking at charts. I've been doing it for a very long time um, and it will be exciting to do it with you with Jordan Peterson's chart. So for those of you who don't know, he is a Canadian media personality. Um, he's a clinical psychologist. Uh, he's a professor. Um, he's got into the public light in recent years, um, arguing against the, uh, in, in identity politics, arguing against the legality of um, gender pronouns. Uh, so he's got both praise and criticism for that. He's an author of three books, The Maps of Meaning, which was uh, myth and religion, literature, and uh, and neuroscience, and how all that works. So he's deep uh, investigator in all kinds of different subjects. Um, he's, uh, I think, the main bestseller was Twelve Rules of Life. Twelve Rules of Life: How to How to Live Life in a Correct Way. And he's just done another one called Beyond Order, which is another uh, twelve rules of life and the most recent thing is that he's joined up or he's aligned himself to the daily wire so he's going to be out there with a much bigger audience um hundreds and thousands of people uh will be watching him on that so he's uh he's a very famous as an intellectual anyway uh and people either like him or, or can't stand him uh, i like him i mean i'm doing this because i want to have some fun and I want to give you a taste of uh, a proper reading, although my anyone who knows me knows that if they have a reading with me, um, time isn't something I generally pay any attention to. However, I've got to be careful because this is a YouTube video, so it's going to be within a certain uh, normal parameter. OK, um, before we get into it, my name is Richard Beaumont. I've been doing human design for 25 years and uh, 20 of those have been training a professional analyst to do readings. So let's get into it. Okay, so here's uh, Jordan's chart. Um, he's a 5 1 manifester. So the type is manifester. Uh, closed and repelling aura. People can't really sense what's going on there until it comes out. Um, very useful for a man who is an intellectual who enjoys um, arguing with people and proving his point. They can't sense what's going on. So he comes out of the blue in a sense. Um, if I use my little drawing tool here, there are two sides to him. So it's a split definition, um, including the solar plex as the authority, the inner authority and the, um, the ajna, the throat and the G center separated off from the will and the spleen so just as an overview um so as an overview we're looking at someone who has um his emotions connected to his thinking connected to his direction and separate from that, what he wants, what he wants to put out, um, what he wants to persuade people in or about, um, the will going into the spleen, a tremendous instinct in the moment to really know what's going on with other people. Very useful. No wonder he's such an excellent um, thinker and excellent uh, in any kind of argument. Talking of arguments, um, you can see up here the cross um, 45, 26, 36, 6 is the left angle cross of confrontation. And this is really confrontation that comes from the outside towards um, whoever's in power at the time. This is like the right. Contra, uh, confrontations it's like the the real king coming back and going hey wait a minute i should be doing that you're sitting in my seat you know it's this kind of thing so it's really um as a five one as a heretic as someone who is here on a kind of karmic life 
to confront those that are in power that are not the king that are not putting out the education for the people and when i say king i'm not kidding this is the 45th gate in the fifth line the epitome of the king and it's in the line of leadership all gathering together must have a center and a focus the intellectual sorry the intuitive intellect and gift for innovation that enhances the group effort and ensures continuity through respect of the center the gift of expressing leadership on the material plane uh, and the other side of it the drive for leadership that may not yet have earned its right well yeah i'm sure he's learned that along the way but uh, i gave you a, a quick uh, resume of all the different qualifications he's had and all the different trainings that he's done so he has the right intellectually he has the right by his professorship and by his um by his acclaim and by his um being able to basically um defeat if i put it that way defeat almost anyone in argument so he's a very he's a very um good person to have in the species in that every you know with all governments with all societies it always comes to a point where there is um, a kind of stagnancy at the top or um, they're losing the touch with the people and uh, we're in that situation now as far as I'm concerned so to have some refreshing voice coming up and challenging what is going on and and really showing it and making his point is a very valuable being to have at this time in my view so the rightful king comes back and um one thing to understand about the 45th gate and um this keynote of king um you're only a king if you've got a territory now jordan's territory is, is his intellectual mastery and the knowledge that he has and his incredible memory and his territory grows as he gets out there more as he promotes his ideas out to the world so his territory keeps on growing um very well I think he's got millions of people following him right now so I just wanted to say that um yeah I'll do the um let's see what shall I do I just wanted to do that first I think uh, I'd better go through the the definitions rather than do it any other way I just wanted to point out that um the left angle cross of confrontation is uh, is the cross it's it shows that he's here to uh, fulfill this life through uh, civil, through the quarter of civilization through bringing something adding something to civilization um for experiencing the life in the body where he goes all the interviews he goes all the places that he travels to all the different uh, places that he speaks at to be involved in the life in in the experience of it now let's go into the main uh, set of definitions so we start with the emotional center and here you can see that every single gate is unconscious so because it's in red so there's going to be he doesn't know when his emotions are going to come out you know he is an emotional being tears will come to his eyes when he's speaking about something when he's reflecting upon something sometimes it's it's part of his manifesting nature the motor and the awareness center but the motor of the emotional system is what reaches to the throat it what it's what makes him a manifester and an emotional manifester so the emotions are unconscious um and yet they're always there and they're in they're in multiple ways the the we have an accent here on the sixth gate which is a tribal gate um about it's like a it's like a ph uh in terms of do you let out the emotions or not is there someone there to be be there for you if you were to let out what you really feel and if not then to hold it back um 
it's in the first line it is actually part of i was trying to get away from that but it is actually uh, part of the cross retreat the realization that wasting one's resources against overwhelming odds is not courage but folly in the exaltation the power of regeneration that can embrace retreat as a phase not a failure the emotional stability to accept conflict and this is what makes his uh, interviews so exciting because he can handle conflict you know they can disagree with him he's okay about people disagreeing with him providing they can prove their point and convince him but you know often he will he will go okay yes point taken and he can he can do that um the other side the inferiority complex where retreat is experienced as a personal weakness emotional instability in times of cry in times of conflict um his closest family would know more about that and I'm not, I don't really want to comment on that much the main thing is he is here to to be this is a source of all emotional uh waves so it's a very powerful thing to have and it does really want to you know get the feelings out get something moving with those feelings the 55th gate is the only second line that he's got and this is in the line of it's in the 55th gate a gate of abundance a gate of um, happiness or sadness but in the line of distrust um and again this is unconscious in him so people will see in him that they they wonder does he really know what he's doing basically his argument goes off and they go huh? you know he's left foots them by going somewhere but he really does know where he's going abundance hampered by slander or gossip and yes he's had some of that uh the gift of being able to penetrate to the center that may demonstrate effectively through its relating talents that it is trustful that its trustfulness is genuine emotional stability and the strength of the spirit is dependent on being trusted by others so because he's getting to the center of the argument because he's really there they you know he they know everyone knows that he's going to follow the line through to his conclusion but he's probably had to work on that the other side is the direct challenge to the slanderers who will always have the advantage of quoting the bard methinks he doth protest too much only continued example can overcome distrust the emotional drive to insist on trustworthiness that does not guarantee its acceptance by others or benefits the spirit so yeah it's this is you see that sometimes in in his uh lectures where he's kind of overstating or seems to be overstating that um he's he's right in a in a genuine way if i put it that way um it's a lovely gate um and it's in fact because it's the only second line you know there's the, there's a kind of a play involved with it i would say um the fact that people may not know where he's going until he gets there you know and that he i think there's a playful side to him it's in it's in mars as well uh which is yeah strong uh immature fiery when i say strong i mean unstable so this is the individual emotional energy and then we have the full stream well not the full stream but three quarters of the stream of feeling that starts in the 30th gate and moves up to the 35th gate so this is desire on the move this is the desire for sharing something with others sharing experiences with others um sharing the experiences of going to different places in the channel of transitoriness sharing the the going into the crisis into something new and finding his way out of it again and every time he's <laughs> he's being interviewed you know there are really smart people who are going right well I'm gonna I'm gonna defeat Jordan you know and you so see he knows he's going into something but um not always they're not always critical and, and hopefully with the daily wire it will be um it'll be more him speaking about certain things we'll see so this is um this is a roller coaster wave that comes through 
you know, ex expectations, the rise of expectations, the fall of disappointment, the rise again of expectations. It is quite a ride to be on. And because there's no direct conscious access to the emotions, you know, we, he doesn't know what's, what he's going to be feeling at any time. You know, it, it, it just can come on, on him like waves. Um, the drive for progress or the gate of progress is also the gate of um, being there, done that, you know, the, uh, the jack of all trades. You could see in the uh, titles in, uh, in the content of the first book that I mentioned in myth and religion and literature and all the different things that he'd brought together. So there's a diversity in that, and there's a um, a good experiential voice and a, a voice that really sounds like they've, you know, you can hear the experience in in when he describes certain things, um, when it's really when it really um, touches him. It's uh, I think it's very beautiful. So let's see. So this is in um, this is in Mercury. Uh, in this gate of progress, in the detriment, in the third line. Ah, yes, collaboration. Uh, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That's the, the general heading, but he has it fixed in detriment. The need to be the center that ignores the importance of others. The need to be the center for progress. Now, he he is a center for progress in my view, so I don't have a problem with that. But the fact that he's, it's fixed in detriment doesn't mean that it can't flip. I want you to understand a general rule in human design that the detriments, although in this software they're in black, in the I Ching they're actually white. In other words, it's something to work on. You know, this need to be the center of progress in order to flip it, in order to, to go to the other side which is beneficial encouragement of others that expands personal as well as communal progress, the ability to bring progressive change into others' lives. Um, and I think you will see that as things go on. In fact, it's already happening with his collaboration with The Daily Wire. Um, so it's something that, he's, that he is working on, I believe. But collaboration, being the centre, being able to be... Jordan Pearson coming coming on and it's like okay so uh here's Jordan it's always fun in my view anyway so a lot of a lot of uh, emotional energy unconscious energy coming to the surface um wanting to bring people into um the experience of the truth, I guess, what he's looked into, what he's looked into in the past. This is a past orientated channel because it's abstract. So again, he often brings different things up that people may not have heard of or reminding people. Here we have the 33rd gate, the gate of memory, one of the gates of memory. Um, so a lot of abstract uh, energy, two of the channels, the channel of transitoriness and the um, the prodigal are uh, abstract. So great memory. Um, let's uh, let's go here. The no, not yet. Yes, okay. <clears throat> here we have the G center with all the roles of leadership in terms of direction. So the logical leader in terms of the heretic. Well, that's very fitting. The first gate in uh, creation is uh, independent of will. So his creative, kind of quirky, eccentric side to him, if I put it that way, um, and his unique way of dressing. Um, and here we have the 13, the listener, so the listener and the one that the, and the revealer together. Um, the 33 giving him this uh, ability to uh, to really see the larger um, view of things, bigger picture. He's got it in the line of spirit. Um, privacy is a path to success, the need to be alone to reflect upon things. And the other side, a drive for privacy that will cut off its relationships often abruptly. 
And you can see that in some of the ways, in some of the discussions uh, that he's having. You know, he'll just go, okay, you know, he'll just he'll just cut off. Um, anyway, the point is, um, that's if they're not getting his point. There comes a point where there's no point. So, uh, so this is this is about uh, the past. This is about looking back into the past in a historical sense. And also in his own uh, private life, I'm sure he's he's always looking back, seeing where he's come from, seeing the progress in his life, seeing his impact in the world. Manifestors are here to make an impact, and he's really seeing his impact. It's it's so beautiful to see a manifestor impacting and and really getting out there, especially a fifth line with his message. So I love that. Here we've talked about the uh, this this gate is the king. It's the gate of the word, the, um, it says I have or I don't have, you know, I have or I don't have, um, I remember or I don't remember, I feel usually like a change. I mean, he's been to a number of different universities and then going into the YouTube and then going into um, being the author and now, now leaving all the formal uh, teaching and, and the sessions behind as he now goes into really becoming more public so feeling like a change wanting to feel the, the progress wanting to help progress get out there too um before i go up there we'll just finish the 15th gate 15th gate the gate of the love of humanity and also the gate of extremes also in the fifth line um the ability to sense when otherwise balanced behavior must be aligned to meet the met the requirements of changing environment balanced behavior the power to grow the capacity of the self to grow through experiencing the extremes and the other side the tendency to overcompensate the drive for the self to overcompensate and disturb the flow so this is really I'd call him a humanitarian. He's also got his own uh, his own way of working. You know, he does not doesn't want to work on anyone else's time. Can't be really held to anyone else's schedule. When he's got the energy and he's got the will to move and and get on with the work, then that's what he will do. Um, not a man that uh, wants to be tied to anyone else's schedule and capable of really. Um, yeah bringing bringing the nature of humanity into the light is what i would say shining a light on it in some way um to see where the behavior needs to be or is being adjusted in the wrong way i would say right now okay up here we have the fixed ajna with the 24 and the 1762 so this is a repetitive mind uh, in immaturity in mars the hermit the discipline and focus that ensures renewal aloneness enriches the potential for rational thought and the other side is aloneness encourages the potential uh, of the potential of illusion or delusion we've we've seen aloneness coming up in a number of times in this chart we've got the gate of aloneness here in the 40th gate as well uh, the gate of retreat here, um, and now we have uh, now we have it here in the twenty four. So again, this is someone who likes to spend a lot of his time alone and reading and thinking, and um, and rereading and re and changing things, trying to make things, uh, trying to make the meaning really clear. Um, I I saw an interview with him where he he said that he he rewrote or he yeah, he rewrote every sentence in his first book something like 50 times or something like that. I can't remember the exact figure. Could have been more, could have been less, but I think it was more. But basically, it's a really unusual mind to uh, to do that. Okay, um, let me just bring that there, right? Okay, we've got um, we've got the... So, and it's a, it's a gate of returning, so it's also pondering upon the mysteries it's pondering upon the inner truth um this is what it looks to looking for the pattern outside of things looking at the mysteries looking to see what's 
yeah what's really going on at a at a higher sense at a knowing sense at an esoteric sense as well again we've got myth and religion in the first first book um, this comes down into the 17th gate, the gate of opinions, unconscious. So he's un, unaware of his own opinions um, until they come out. You see, again, in the interview, sometimes you go, well, I hadn't, you know, hadn't thought of it that way or whatever. Um, I think it becomes clear in the speaking of it. So here, logical opinions, again, in detriment. Uh, a tendency to limit openness to aesthetically pleasing stimuli, yes. Well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, he loves beauty. He loves he loves a nice, he loves things to be uh, organized and neat and, uh, and tidy, you know, making sure that there's no gaps in the argument, making sure that his point is is really well supported in the details of the 62nd gate which this moves into so this is a um it's called the channel of acceptance but really it's it's a channel of acceptance really wanting it's a gunsling in mind where he wants you to accept his argument over you over your position this is about standing for what standing making a standing point Taking a standpoint and going, this is mine, this is what I see, because of this, because of that, because of the other. Logic will, will have a sequential reasons for the argument. All got to put together beautifully. And here again, we have um, aloneness in terms of, I think this is just the aesthetic. Yeah, it's as asceticism. The perfected aesthetic withdrawal in the pursuit of harmony and simplicity where outside dangers do not exist, and there is time to pursue inner meaning in detail, detail that can only be experienced after periods of isolation and reflection. So much about him is about really thinking and thinking and thinking and thinking. Um, and uh, so this is the kind of person that I enjoy because he's he, people come up with different arguments he's already thought about them <laughs> yes i you know i've looked at that one that doesn't work because of this this and this you know um he's uh this this manifest side of him to go out there and really um, want to use his intellectual ability to to open up new ways of thinking, to open up new dialogues, to open up new ways of considering what would be the best way to the future, to consider what we're doing with the way the world is being run, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I love the fact that he was looking at um, the idea of belief as well, the, 62 um, in its motion moves to the 56 in terms of storytelling and here we have the mythical side the, the 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 direction that is basically well let's see what happens let's see what happens um which is why you see the jumps in his career because it's like well i've been successful at this and this and you know i've looked at all that well what's next yeah, this is next. Okay, well, I'm going to tell people what I think, and let's see what happens. And uh, made a real name for himself in that. Um, so logical argument, but not logical direction. This is what I wanted you to to get. Um, but again, very um, strong in his argumentative abilities. The one and the four in harmony here you know, his values in harmony. Um, this kind of, and thinking again and again, and point, I mean, you know, he's such, he is a, a supreme intellectual because of this. And yet it's it's the experience of being with others that is what will fulfill his life. It's a mixture, you know, he's got to be alone and then get his arguments together, get his points of views across, and then go out there and, and do all these interviews. It's or, you know, it's, it's just perfect in a way. All right, so that's that lot. 
That's me timing. I better hurry up, huh? Okay, we've now got this second side, which is the will into the spleen. Um, 40th gate here, gate of the deliverer, gate of aloneness. Uh, he's got it twice in Pluto. Here and here. Third line, trial and error. Um, I guess he's had to deal with that, actually. Being alone and being married. Um, humility, a calculated mode in deliverance to avoid attracting attention of negative forces. Calculated mode of deliverance. Um, you, can, you can imagine when someone is asking you pointed questions in an interview when you've got this kind of design um to want to continue the the discussion you know so he's not he's not he will he will this emotion will come out if the person is really um taking a standpoint that is not congruent with what they're talking about but it's also the subtlety to enjoy deliverance without having to flaunt it the capacity of the ego to avoid negative forces, even if it means being alone. It's this side of him that will retreat, and it's in yes, it's in both. Will um, will not be, want to be around all the haters, particularly. Uh, will not want to be around those people that continue to want him to deliver too much. Do remember, this is a manifester. This is not a generator that can keep going on and on and on. You know, the danger of exhaustion for this man is huge. Um, so the need to be alone, the need to recuperate, the need to rest in between the projects that he's doing, the places that he's going. Very important. And uh, Pluto, uh, life, death and transformation. You know, if he doesn't get that one, he's going to exhaust himself. Here we have the, um, the channel of surrender which is um, extremely good at, uh, I'm making a bit more of a mess here, just clear that up. Channel of Surrender 2644. 26 is known as the, um, <clears throat> the trickster. Uh, it's known as the salesman, the old saleswoman. It's known as the one that exaggerates. It's the gate of the egoist. You know, he has an ego. He's designed to have an ego. Nothing wrong with it. You know, he's designed to be proud of who he is in his life, I mean, necessarily so. Adaptility, adapt adaptability, the understanding of mechanics and the application of energy to achieve maximum potential. The power of memory, another, another aspect of the memory, the power of memory which maximizes the potential of the ego to attract others. You know, he's got an incredible memory. The other side, a resistance and dissatisfaction uh, when basic changes to nature are necessary. The resistance of the egoist to adaption. Well, there's that as well. But um, basically, this is the will to really want to, um, yeah, I could say, put the message out. It is the fifth line. Here to ground by, by really getting that message out. But at the same time, it's the tribal warrior. You know, he doesn't fight just for himself to make the argument. He is aware as a humanitarian that he's also fighting on behalf of millions of other people in uh, in objecting to what's going on at the moment around the world. Uh, he really is. Um, the 44 is, where are you? Down there. So this is the instinct, the instinct to really change the delivery according to what's happening with the other person it's the instinct to know whether to raise your voice higher or lower it or you know oh yes or or or, or say something else and then come back to it it's a it's a very strongly manipulative natural ability that he has fully conscious in fact it's the only fully conscious channel that he has um, and why is it called surrender? Because the uh, the will must surrender to the instinct. So he's on the ball there. 
uh, in Neptune, though, it's not particularly... Well, here you can see it. Honesty, the refusal to engage in hypocritical interaction. Indifference at its most logical and cutting. And he has certainly got a cutting side to him. Not only in this, but also in the other set of definition in making his point. A logic can be absolutely ruthless. And with this as well, uh, indifference at its most logical and cutting the indifference possible when guided through the instinctive memory. This is the cellular memory. And again, he's got it in a in a, a strong position. Well, it's in Neptune, but it's uh, it's a it's it's something that's always there. This this fear of the past in the spleen, this fear that if something isn't done, then, you know, there aren't going to be enough resources for the tribe, the the need to get things going when things are going badly. Um, and yeah, um, they're going badly, so we need him. A son in detriment that in extreme situations in cases of self-sustainment would expect assistance from the forces it has formally rejected. Yeah, well, we'll see. Um, I can't see him going back to being a professor at a university after all this, but there you go. So this is really, this is a very strong um, aspect of him. It is separated off from his emotional um, and the thinking and direction side. The other fear here is the 48th gate, which we'd normally say is a gate of inadequacy. It's a gate of um, logical solutions that can be applied often getting lost in the not self and this is one of his splits is getting lost in chasing skills perhaps trying to master various skills but really to settle into where he is now to have the potential solutions that really could help everyone it's logical he wants to help everyone this is someone who wants to help humanity who is actually has his own standpoints in order to try to get that across um it's in the focus of the mind in the 48 6 and here we have self-fulfillment um an undiminishable resource a tendency to superficiality that though generous and nurturing will lack the inspirational quality that can transform its gift to common currency where its depth is limited the taste will be superficial and affect the quality of the possible talent. At the same time, it can be flipped. And from all the, I mean, from all the reading and research that he's done, he's a 5 1, he's a heretic investigator. He's looked deep into things. So um, by this age, I think it will be a, a very strong part of him to want to. Um, offer some help to people in how things can be uh, improved for the future. So um, the other split that I didn't mention would be the 21 with the will connecting here. So he'll be looking at, um, he'll be hyper, can I say that? Yeah, he'd be hypersensitive to um, to control issues from the outside. I've already said that the left angle cross of confrontation is there to confront the um, those in power if they, you know, if they've if they've gone off what it's what they should be. He's a traditionalist in many ways. And um yeah, he'll be looking at the at the controls going on. That will be one of his focuses. Where he will be lost in the not self will be being too controlling on himself. And remember that the manifester is a being that doesn't want to be controlled by anything, and yet at the same time they can end up controlling themselves to some degree. So he, he'll be working on that one. It's part of what he has to work on, the control issues in that sense. And the other joining one will be the gate of affection in the 37. So this was when he would be working too much for, yeah, 
without being paid that much. I mean, after all, he was in his election on university. I, I know he would have got a certain amount, but nothing like he's getting now. So he's being more effective now. So this is someone who has a natural um, tendency. Sorry, he has a natural, yes, a natural tendency to want to deliver. And it also is a tender aspect to him. He's got a very sweet uh, emotional system in in many different ways, which I'm not going to go into now because I am really going on far too long. Okay, so let us go to the head center. And here we have the being lost in the not self of thinking about things that may have nothing to do with him, you know, thinking about things that are just way up there, especially having various doubts. Here we have the doubting Thomas. So you can get lost in really thinking about the future and going, ah, nothing that's going to work. Mm, got to find a got to find a plan, got to find a formula, got to find a solution, because I can see the world going going to hell and back. So and yet so he can get lost up there but at the same time he can be wise about thinking about the future and seeing where things are going and looking for something that could be helpful and talking in that way i have no doubt that he's also learning from the discussions he's having um, in the uh, roles that he's now playing and as i've already said there will be a tendency to get lost in esoteric truth as well but as a wisdom, the two together, I mean the two together, <laughs> two together is like the science of human design, really, both esoteric and uh, analogical, analytical side to the thinking process, of course. Um, <clears throat> down here we have the open route, which uh, simply put, you know, you could be in too much of a hurry, <clears throat> and uh, speeding through things um especially with the 19th gate in resources so we've got the team player here so um rushing around trying to uh, connect with others to get something done that has to be done and also at the same time wanting to be accepted um by them there'll be a probably a a fear of rejection here in the 19 looking to the 49 um so the 19 here in the first line the successful approach is interdependence the successful approach that does not lose its individual character and acceptance the pressure of wanting without losing one's identity when being accepted by others um and the other side the pressure for acceptance which fears eventual rejection these are things that he would have been working on um it has other things i you know uh, when i think about him as a clinical psychologist i can see how this could play but i don't really want to go there at the moment the main thing is um is he a, is he unconscious is he unaware of his own needs you know we know that he's had um health problems and um yeah health problems from running around doing too much you know uh health problems from not looking after himself what are his own needs this is the gate of needs um yeah does he is i hope he's i hope someone's really looking after him I'm sure his wife is here in the open sacral the gate of commitment being the only gate so he's surrounded by generators you know 68 percent of people are generators and here we have a gate of commitment and when it's playing out the wrong way over commitment commitment to too many things being overburdened by yes 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 you know woohoo still got to turn up and do it all without the energy to keep on and on with it absolutely vital that he has rest in between absolutely vital that he spends enough time alone you know i, had, I didn't go through everything because i had, you know it goes on but we can see here burnout in the 30 line four an unrealistic pace that begs misfortune unconscious in the emotional um desire to really to really make a difference 
an unrealistic pace that begs misfortune, uncontrollable expansion with the inevitable bursting of the bubble, uncontrollable feelings that accompany accompanying emotional outbursts. Well, yes, you see that in the interviews sometimes, but still an un, a, 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 a pace that's too much for his emotional system and a 29th gate that really wants to commit to too many things and doing too much. So that's the real danger, I think, especially if it means him having to be scheduled by people, which I don't think he'd put up with for long, but still. Um, it's also the ability as a wisdom, um, you know, to see, and this is evaluation, uh, the power to wait. So this is commitment. Now, does he wait? Yes, he does. I, you see him, you seeing him being quiet while someone's making their point. And sometimes he, he wants to say something, but it's like, you know, wait here, let them hear them out, hear them out. Don't dive in. But he does sometimes. Again, it's not, he, he's not a generator. Directness. Now, this is something you'll, you'll definitely recognize. Directness. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. The wisdom to use the simplest and most direct approach to solve difficulties. The power to commit oneself to the simplest and most direct process. And the other side of it, the power of directness, which offends others. Well, yes, he does offend others, and he is kind of designed to do that. Does he overdo it in the open sacral? Probably. Probably. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, but also... Think about the open centers and the mind going there playing and the way that the mind and the intellect works and the movement and the pondering and the different ideas that he's considering. You know, this is all adds to the richness of, of what he can bring. Um, as long as he doesn't exhaust himself. So that's uh, that's what I've got to say. Uh, the route is a three five road. So, yep, trial and error, but heretical. Here we have the, I've already, I've already looked at this, the, the general and the, um, the savior. So 3-5, 33, yeah. It has the 19 three times. Can you see that? So because it's three times, this is, this is a real trip. He really needs to make sure that he is getting his needs met, making sure that, you know, in the rush to whatever it might be, again, he's here to wait out his emotional wave, to feel into what's going on until he has the clarity of what he wants to do and then inform those uh, he's going to impact by it. Um, 19th gate three times. I hope he's going to look after himself. Okay, so that was fun. I hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, Jordan Peterson. And uh, if you did enjoy that, please uh, like and share and subscribe. And uh, let other people enjoy my look at what it's all about. All right. Enjoy that. And I will see you again next time. Bye for now.